Hey, 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 Jake Geek here, and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. Well, we have come to the end of Fantasy Baseball. It was a long season. It was an adventurous season. There were ups and downs. There were times that we wanted to praise and cheer and be happy. And then as of late, there have been times of heartbreak, frustration, and just asking ourselves, what the heck? So, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, cover the final standings for all of our teams. And it's crazy to think that we are in six leagues. Well, we were in seven until that one guy kicked us out because he's a loser. But we have covered six leagues throughout the course of this year. Um, that's pretty exciting because there were times where we thought we were bringing multiple ships to this channel. And unfortunately, we were not able to... Uh, there, there's a chance for one, but we were not able to bring multiple. Hopefully next year will be better, um, and I'm looking forward to next year already as uh, there will be uh, future episodes where we talk about keepers and talk about fantasy drafts and, and all that good stuff, so I'm looking forward to that. But um, in any case, we're going to go ahead and get through the six teams, even though we already know some of the the finals for some um and then we are going to go over the playoff bracket um uh, we kind of do like a, a march madness that this would be like october madness um since my yankees are not in it sad sad day um hopefully we will get better in the off season come back next year and uh, have a a team healthy the entire year um, I know Judge missed a lot of time. Stanton, which, I mean, even when he was on the, the field, he was batting less than 200. Um, and then we had so many different guys in the outfield and, and behind the plate and, and, and on the pitching mound. So it's it's crazy to think about how many guys that we had um, throughout the year. But in any case, uh, let's go ahead and get to it. The first team, as always, we're going to talk about is the Cheese Weasels. That is our year-long Roto League, and this year came to an end with us still in fifth spot, but we had 110.5 points. Um, so here in the last week, I, I gained another three points, but did not change any positions in our standings. Um, overall, I think it was a good year. Um, I do uh, wish we could have done better. Obviously, we didn't come in first, so we you know, should have. Um, been able to do better, but I want to go over some of the guys who led us in certain categories in hits You would think that Trey Turner would lead us because he had 170. However, Stephen Kwan came in with 171 hits for us Runs was also close with Turner having us 102 but Yelich came in with 106 when it comes to home runs, had Jordan Alvarez been healthy the entire year, he absolutely would have led us. However, he only had 31. Marcel Ozuna led us with 40. When it comes to RBIs, Spencer Torkelson had a great year with 94. Alvarez came in second on the team with 97, and Ozuna led us with 100 on the dot. With walks, Yelich also was close to the top of 78, but Nate Lowe ended up having 94. And when it comes to steals, no one was even close. Estre Ruiz had 67. Pitching-wise, the three guys that had 12 wins for me were Merrill Kelly, Kevin Gosman, and Aaron Nola. And saves, Camilo Duvall had 39 and Carlos Estevez had 31. Now remember, this league does allow 15 keepers. So at some point in time, we're going to have to look at these guys and figure out who we want to keep. And now we're going to talk about Peach Creek Purgatory. We've been in control of this team all of five weeks and have done nothing but score, score, score. This week, we were able to come up with a win, 1,498 to 1,190. Our top scorers were Ron Acuna with 133 points, Matt Olson with 96 points, and Nick Pavetta with 91 points. As for the whole year, the top three scorers were all from the Braves. Ron Acuna led us with 1,662 points, while Matt Olson had 1,391 points, while Austin Riley had 1,233 points. Pitching-wise, Blake Snell was our top scorer with 988 points, just barely missing the 1,000-point club. At some point in time this summer, we're also going to have to come back and look at this team because we have 40 keepers to think about. 
I feel really good about this team. As I've said before, we are absolutely going to win more than four games next year. And you know what? I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We're going to make playoffs next year, and I think we're going to perform very well. And now we're going to move to Russell, my gym jams. This week, we ended up coming with a win, eight wins to five losses to three ties against the team that we beat in the first round of the playoffs, and we were playing them in the third round in the seventh place game. But in any case, we're the seventh best team. So that's exciting. As we drop to this league, we're all pitching. I added Kyle Funderbunk and Tim Meza and dropped Javier Assad. Now, had I made it to the championship game, had I even been close, the guy who won this league is also the guy who is the commissioner of this league. And I'm going to read off some of his team. Because frankly, had he not won, I don't understand honestly how he doesn't go undefeated. Because if I had this team, I would be embarrassed to lose at any point in time. Some of his team consists of Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson, Jordan Alvarez, Julio Rodriguez, Ronald Acuna, Adelise Garcia, Trey Turner, Nolan Arenado, Garrett Cole, Aaron Nola, Kodai Senga, Tyler Glasnow, Zach Wheeler, Felix Bautista, Sandy Alcantara, and Shane Bieber. Honestly, man, if I had that team and I lost a single category any week, I would be embarrassed. Now, you may think, how did he get this team? I don't know. I have no idea because any of my good guys, I've kept. So, I don't know. But it's, it's frustrating. Not because he has such a good team. Absolutely not. But because I feel like at some point in time, people have traded him just because he's the commissioner. Or people have traded him because they're not aware of how good the player is. And it's like a five for one deal. I don't know if that's ever been the case. But it's just frustrating because how do you wind up with all those good people? How? In any case, there are 26 keepers going into next year, so we're going to have to revisit this team as well, which I am super excited about. This is the team that did the worst for us this year, so I really want to revamp it and make sure that next year we put on a better showing. Now we're going to talk about the Kent Murphy Dingers. This week we were in the third or fourth place game, and that was frustrating. That was annoying. Um... I feel like we should have been in the championship game, but in any case, we won eight categories to two categories. Um, so we came in third. I feel like we absolutely could have put up uh, a better showing against uh, the guy who ended up winning because looking at my categories, his categories for this week, um, and now I also realize that they would have changed because there would have been different thoughts and, and different ads and drops um, and, and potentially different players. But if you just took my stats and, and the guy who won stats, we would have tied four to four to two. So uh, the person who lost, it was eight to two, I believe. So yeah, we definitely would have put up a, a much better showing. There were some ads and drops for this week. Even though I was only playing for third, I was looking ahead to next year. And because we have keepers, um, uh, if you draft a person in a certain round, you get to keep him in that round for three years. So I was able to pick up Bo Bichette and Luis Robert. Now, Bichette is a second round keeper and Luis Robert is a, I think he's a third or fourth round. Um, I think it really uh, depends on if the guy had two third round picks, because if it's two third round picks and he would be a fourth rounder. So in any case, um, so yeah, I have those two guys who will hopefully be able to give me some leverage when it comes to trades. Um, I mean, I've already thought about some of the guys I want to keep for next year because we do have eight keepers. Now, a few years ago, we only had four and then we moved to six and now we're up to eight. I personally am not a fan of eight. I voted for six. However, more people voted for eight. Um, so... I might have to make some tough decisions because as much as I love JT Real Muto, 
he would be a fifth round keeper. Well, I have Dalton Varsho. And yes, he's batting considerably lower with average. However, he has just as many stolen bases. He has more home runs. And I also believe that he would be able to have more RBIs, especially in a lineup like Toronto. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but in any case, that is one of the examples where I might have to make some tough decisions because both of them are quality. However, the value at 17 might be better for Varsho instead of five at, for Real Muto. So we'll see. I could also trade them. So in any case, um, I want to go over some of the guys who led us in categories. And as much as I would like to talk about different guys, Matt Olson led us in runs, RBIs, and home runs. Ruiz led us in stolen bases, but nothing new there. Pitching-wise, Logan Webb led us in wins with 11. Uh, Jesus Lazardo led us in strikeouts. Now, I did not have Lazardo the entire year. However, I had him for, I don't know, probably the last four weeks or so. Um, maybe five, but in any case, um, our leading saves guy was Carlos Estevez with 31. Now he absolutely should have had more because he had eight blown saves this year. I'm looking forward to next year with this league because again, I've been in this league for holy cow, um, since I was in grad school. So it, it's been a few years. But uh, I'm looking forward to it because I'm in the same uh, group uh, for a fantasy football league. Um, I won the fantasy football league last year. And just a sneak peek, I'm looking good this year in that league. So stay tuned for the video tomorrow. Um, but in any case, um, third place, not exactly where I wanted it. But, you know, it is what it is. And the last team we're going to talk about, South Harmon Institute of Technology. We were in the championship game these last two weeks. And at one point in time, we were losing like 11 to 3. And then we were winning like 10 to 7. What was going to happen on the final day? There were a lot of guys who were projected to start that didn't. A lot of guys that didn't qualify for a quality start, much less a complete game or a shutout. So there were a few of these categories that he had already knocked out last week. Um, so I wasn't able to, to even match him in those. However, there were several categories that I was leading in. Um, and maybe there were enough to get me the championship. We'll see. Going into Sunday, I was leading 10 categories to 7 categories. There were quite a few categories that were very close. Like runs, hits, stolen bases, extra base hits, stuff like that. Um, but then there were a few that there was absolutely no way I was coming back from. He had doubled my number of home runs. I also felt very confident with my pitching because he had like double digit losses and I did not. I also had a great looking ERA and a pristine whip. I was also leading in saves and holds because that's one category together. So I was feeling very confident pitching wise, like I said. There were a few categories that I was uneasy about, like I talked about runs, hits, walks, um, the, the, the extra base hit. So those were completely up to grabs, like less than two separated us in each of those categories. So as I was looking to make my lineup, there were a few guys that I knew weren't going to play. And there were a few guys that already had the S that were going to start. Um, some of my pitchers, Peralta and Braxton Garrett did not end up starting. So I had to rely on a few relief guys, which no problem. I wasn't trying to go for many pitching categories because I was already winning those. And I didn't want to screw that up, especially with WIP or ERA. So with that being said, I put in everyone I thought was playing. And I did not think anything of you know, switching it out because there were a few guys who were in uh, the lineup for teams that were still in the playoff hunt. The main guy I'm talking about and thinking about Tommy Pham. I figured Tommy Pham would be able to produce some RBIs, definitely produce some runs, because I figured the Diamondbacks were going to be playing with heart and with hustle and trying to ensure they made the playoffs. Well, 
at the end of the day, they already knew they were going to make the playoffs by virtue of um, some of the other teams that had finished the game before them. So they ended up losing, but they still ended up winning. But Tommy Pham did not play. That was frustrating because the person that I could have substituted in for him was Kerry Carpenter. So what? Kerry Carpenter played Sunday. What did he do that was so great that Tommy Pham didn't? Well, we tied eight categories to eight categories to two categories. One of the categories we tied in was walks. Kerry Carpenter had a walk. So eight to eight to two, how was a tiebreaker supposed to be decided, especially in the playoffs? So I went and looked and it was head to head record. Okay, well, we played twice in the regular season. So let me see what the record was for us those two games. Well, the first game we played, I won seven categories, he won eight categories, and we tied in three categories. So he has a one category advantage or one game advantage over me. Well, the second time we played, I won seven categories again, and he won six categories, and we tied in five categories. So if you're keeping track at home, I had 14 wins, he had 14 wins, and we tied eight times. Well, that doesn't help any. So I assume the next record they went to to break the tie was the overall record. And as you can see, he had about 20 more games than me. So I ended up losing. Even though we tied in every category that you could tie in. Wins, losses, and ties. So... It's frustrating because it was so close um, and I did lose because of the tie. But I think it's more frustrating that I I don't know why I didn't see or notice that Fam wasn't starting. I believe the, the Tigers game started at 310 and the Diamondbacks started at 340. But that's only a 30 minute difference. I should absolutely have been able to see the starting lineup. So... I probably missed it, but man, that's that's frustrating. A single walk, and I would have won, but shoulda, coulda, woulda. Uh, the ads and drops for this league were ridiculous. There were lots of ads, a lot on my part pitching-wise because I was trying to load up on the saves and the holds because that was one category. Try to get some cheeky wins here and there. I mean, I, I hate wins as a category. Um... Also, a few strikeouts here and there while lowering ERA and whip, um, even though Carlos Estevez decided he wanted to blow two saves in this last week, so great. But in any case, uh, I, I feel like my, my guys did very well for me overall. This is another league where we do have several keepers, so I'm going to be looking ahead to those. This is another league where Matt Olson led most all categories, even though Freddie Freeman did have more runs than him, and of course Ruiz had more steals than him. However, Matt Olson had the most RBIs, most home runs, most walks, and most total bases, even though the total bases was super close. It was you know, separated by, I think, six or seven um olsen had 367 and freddie freeman had 361 so very very close pitching wise merrill kelly had the most wins on my team with 12 and jordan romano had the most save slash holds for me with 38 so we were not able to bring a championship to the jk channel however there's always next year but more importantly there's football season we have four leagues that we can potentially bring championships home in, and I'm looking forward to it. But before we forget all about baseball, let's talk about the playoffs. The real playoffs. So, even though the Yankees are not in it, there are definitely some teams that I feel like I'm pulling for. There, there are definitely some teams that I would much rather win um, anyone but the Astros. But in any case, we're going to break down each game, and I'm going to tell you why I think a team is going to win. Whether it be pitching, hitting, overall team, um, certain injuries, whatever it may be. So the first game, the Marlins and the Phillies. I think the Phillies are going to take this one. They have overall better pitching. They have overall better bats. They have more experience. So I think the Phillies are going to take this one. The next series, the Diamondbacks and the Brewers. And because of pitching, 
Freddie Peralta has not been great. Brandon Woodruff might miss the playoffs completely. And there have been a few pitchers who have not been as sexy, have not been as dominant, have not been as on their A game as of late. Now, however, the Brewers' bats are amazing. My boy Josh Donaldson, they were talking about it today, he has 25 hits on the season. He's batting 152. 25 hits. 13 of those hits were home runs. That's a pretty good clip. However, again, we bring up the average, and that's not so good. But Donaldson is dangerous. Yelich is always dangerous. Tyrone Taylor has come up super big for the team. He's come on very strong. Um, I mean, Contreras has absolutely stepped his game up. Um, but regardless of the hitting, the pitching is what I feel like is going to let the Brewers down and allow the Diamondbacks to win. The Diamondbacks have some core guys who are young and or have enough experience to lead the team. Cattell Marte. Christian Walker, Corbin Carroll, Merrill Kelly. And I love, love, love the fact that the Diamondbacks have a hitting catcher. So many times you'll see the catcher in a lineup and he may very well be the, the odd man out, the weak link. Gabriel Moreno is not that guy. I feel like if he can either DH or, of course, be the, the main catcher for you know the playoffs for the most part, I think the Diamondbacks have a great chance, and I think they're going to get past the Brewers. And next, the Rangers and the Rays. This is tough because I think the Rays have great pitching, um, even though they've lost several guys to season-ending injuries, you know, late or middle into the season. But the Rangers have bats galore. Adeliz Garcia, Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, Nate Lowe. I mean, that's, that's just a few. Obviously, you have Josh Young, who has you know done amazing stuff as a rookie, but also come back from that thumb injury. Jonah Heim behind the plate, that's another hitting catcher who I think is going to be good for years to come if he can maintain his health. I think what's going to hurt one team the most is pitching. As much as I think the firepower the Rangers have, they're going to be relying on pitching, including Nathan Navaldi. Martin Perez, and those guys did well to start the season. Did great, actually, but faltered down the stretch. Had some injuries. Demoted to the bullpen. So, I think that their pitching, um, including their bullpen, Will Smith, has absolutely just fallen apart. Um, Chapman may not always know where the ball goes. Jose Leclerc. Dude, you were supposed to be the closer of the season hurt your back, and then you were deployed as an opener throughout the season. So I don't believe in the Rangers pitching, and I think with some of the guys that the Rays are able to deploy, Eflin, Savali, all 75 guys in their bullpen, they have hitters who can get it done. As much as I hate Randy Rosarino, he gets stuff done. I love Josh Lowe. I love Yandy Diaz. And I think that the Rays are going to be able to take it from the Rangers, mainly because of the pitching the Rangers have or don't have. And the final opening weekend game to talk about the Blue Jays and the Twins. Strictly because of the firepower the Twins do not have, I feel like the Blue Jays are going to win this. The Blue Jays have great pitching in Kevin Gosman and Chris Bassett. They have a ton of firepower. Vladimir Guerrero, Bo Bichette. George Springer, Alejandro Kirk, Dalton Varsho. And if the starting pitchers can get to the 6th or 7th inning, the bullpen for the Blue Jays is amazing. Eric Swanson, Tim Meza, um, not to mention you have Jordan Romano, Jordan Hicks. So I feel like the Blue Jays are going to be able to, to take this series. Now we're going to talk about the Phillies and the Braves. Not really a whole lot to talk about. I think the Braves are going to win because they are the most dominant team. They have a core of guys who were both young, talented, and just amazing at their craft. I was so hesitant on Matt Olson to start this year. I am so glad I decided to roll with him because he's been phenomenal. Some guy named Ronald Acuna just broke records and set himself apart from everyone else. Definitely going to win the MVP. Pitching-wise... 
Spencer Strider is absolutely ridiculous. And the rest of their pitching, I mean, yes, Charlie Morton is hurt. Um, they have a few young guys they're going to have to call up. But I think their pitching overall is not going to be bad enough to where they lose. It's not going to be great. But when you have such firepower on offense, I, I think you have enough to cover, cover your bases when it comes to that. Now, the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers... Strictly because of pitching, I think the Dodgers are going to take this. They have some veterans. They have some new guys. They have a few guys that they can deploy out of their bullpen. I think they have too much. And they have some guys on offense that can absolutely get it done. Um, J.D. Martinez, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Max Muncy, even though he can't hit the broad side of a barn, when he does hit it, it goes a long way. Chris Taylor, again, can't hit the broad side of a barn, but when it's a clutch moment, he comes up. Josh Outman has been great for them as his rookie year is coming to an end. He is definitely making a case to be another vital part of that outfield. Um, they have other players as well, but just to name those few, um, as much as I love the Diamondbacks and I want them to go on, I think the Dodgers are going to take it. Now we're going to move to the Rays and the Orioles. That is another AL East matchup. Uh, I think the Rays are going to take it. Again, talking about the offense that the Rays have and the pitching that the Rays have, I feel like the loss of Felix Batista really left the Orioles' bullpen, I don't want to say in shambles, but it's definitely cracked. Unfortunately, I think this dream season is going to come to an end in the first round for the Orioles, second round overall um, for the playoffs. I think the Rays are going to take it. In the final game in the CS and now ALCS division, um, the Blue Jays and the Astros. I hate the Astros with a passion, but I think they're going to be able to overtake the Blue Jays. Um, not because I think the Astros have great pitching. They have a great bullpen. Now, Ryan Presley's not sexy, but they have some other guys. Hector Neris, Abreu, Presley, because he has proven he is, he's, you know, can stay healthy this year. I, I really thought he was going to get hurt, but he stayed healthy. Um, but I, I think the firepower, the, the bats of, of Houston, is going to be too much. Kyle Tucker is amazing. Jose Altuve still has it. Bregman, when he wants to hit, he does. Jose Abreu is going to come alive, of course, in the, the playoffs because I don't think he's ever been to the playoffs. He's been been in Chicago his entire career, so he's probably thinking, oh, this is what it's like to be good. Uh, in the outfield, you have Jordan Alvarez. You have Chaz McCormick. Um, I, I think the bats of Houston are going to be too much. For the NLDS, you have the Braves and the Dodgers. Again, I have to give the nod to the Braves. The only thing that I think would hurt the Braves in their matchup, in any matchup in the playoffs, is their pitching. Um, now, before I said I didn't think it was bad enough for them to lose, but going against another team with as much firepower as the Dodgers, that's where it could get sticky. Um, as much as I would like to believe that if Riley and if Olsen and if Albies decide they can't do anything, then you would have Ozuna and Rosario and, of course, the guy named Acuna. Um, Travis Darno would be able to do something. So you have enough backups in your lineup that will be able to pick up the slack. Um, so... I think the National League uh, champion will be the Braves. And now we're going to move to the ALDS, where we are going to have a matchup between the Astros and the Rays. Again, I hate the Astros. However, I have to give credit where credit is due, and the Astros have a good team. I think this is where the magical season for the Rays comes to an end because the bats for Houston are too much for that pitching staff. And now we're going to move to the World Series, the Braves and the Astros. For the sake of my eternal deep hatred for the Astros, I want and believe the Braves are going to win. I feel like the Braves, again, have too much firepower. They have guys who can come out of the woodwork. They've got relief guys. AJ Minter, this is my prediction, is going to come up huge and clutch for the Braves 
in the World Series. Put it on the board. It's going to be AJ Minter who's going to give them a, a final win or a final save to secure the series. Um, but I, I just, I, I really don't like the Astros, so I hope they lose. So that wraps up the season for us. I am super excited that the um, playoffs. Well, that's going to wrap up the final week of fantasy baseball for us. I'm super excited to have shared this season with you with all of our teams. I'm looking forward not only to talk to you more about football, but looking forward to next year sharing my teams with you when it comes to baseball again. Um, it's It's been a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Um, so again, thank you so much for sticking with me through these 26 weeks. Holy cow, 26 weeks of this. Um, so again, thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate everything. Uh, if you won any fantasy championships, congratulations. If you lost any fantasy championships, then I am as heartbroken as you are. I don't know how you feel, but we're in the same boat going in the same direction. Um, I hate people who say I know how you feel because you really don't. But in this situation, it is a very similar feeling losing in the playoffs because it is heartbreaking regardless of how close or how you know much you got blown out. So again, this is Jay Cake, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing part of your day with me. Mm -hmm.